Hey, it's Nardwar, the human serviette from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, saying, the other night, I was in downtown Vancouver with Rob from Neptune Records. I was going to give him a ride home to Neptune Records. As we were walking on the sidewalk, we came across the Orpheum Theater. There was a whole bunch of people outside. Thundercat had just finished. Oh, I have completely forgotten dates and times. Yes, I've been entrenched in the Nard Nest for the past two years. Only now I'm getting back into action. At that very minute, Ben and William came up to me and wanted to take a selfie. Thank you, Ben and William. Also... To my surprise, the manager of Thundercat, Autry, came up to me and wanted a photo as well. I took a photo with Autry and got his contact information for a future Thundercat interview. Rob from Neptune Records also texted Autry a picture of Finn Wolfhard at Neptune Records with a cutout of Thundercat. So, me and Rob are heading back to Neptune Records and Rob gets a phone call. He's like, who is this? He answers the call. It's Autry, who he had texted that picture earlier. Autry said, Thundercat wanted to meet me. I was totally honored, but now I was at Neptune Records. Autry said, no problem. We'll bring Thundercat to you. So at Neptune Records, I grabbed my video camera, gave it to Ben, Rob's son, and then nine minutes later at 1237 a.m., Thundercat arrived at Neptune Records to meet me, Nardwar, the human serviette. Amazing. Nardwar! Thundercats manager. Autry. Autry, welcome to hey. Neptune Records. Hey, man. This is amazing, Thundercat. I had no idea you were in town, and then I bumped in to... Autry. Autry, and here we are at Neptune Records in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, hey. with Ben. Hey, Ben. Hey. Behind the A camera, and the owner of the store, Rob. What's up, Rob? Behind the B cam. How was the show tonight? It was uh, real bass heavy. Well, as it should be, as it should be. But I'm honored that you guys have traveled all this way to meet me. Like, you came to me. Well, hey. Yeah, man, had to, man. You know what I'm saying? That's amazing. Because, <laughs> like, if we look around here, what, when you look around Neptune, what do you see? I see some great records. I see some amazing records. I see Buffalo Springfield. We turn around here. What do we see? Aside from the Nardwar t-shirt? Ah, yes. Now I see some great, great vinyls. See some good stuff there. See some real good stuff there. See some Doom. See some Tyler. See some Andy. Andy Bo Andy Bobani. Some Joni. Some uh, some uh, Freddy. <laughs> some Nasi. And some Mackie. Yeah, and some Doji. Thundercat at Neptune Records Live. This is like an unexpected appearance for Thundercat, isn't it? Like, do you just usually drop into record stores like past midnight? You know, uh, there was a time. Was there? Was there yeah, there's. A, we used to have a couple of things. No, we never had anything in LA that stayed open this late. You just. Just the just the homie's house. You just go to the homie's house, and it's either that house looks like this, or yeah, no, no, no record stores this late. No. You know, and we got Amoeba, and that moved. And it's yeah, it's like it still get takes a second to get used to going to that Amoeba now, but not this late. No, this is tight. This is tight. Here we are at Neptune Records. Looking, what do we see? We see some more records here. Some more records. Yeah. Ooh, Mac, so pretty. I'm Canadian. Yes. We love Mac. Yes. 
And he lived in Vancouver for a couple years as well. Ah, yes. Where you play tonight at the Orpheum. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. I miss Mac. And we see more records here, Thundercat. More, more records. This is really great. The new arrivals. What do you think about the new arrivals? Well, I mean, new as compared to Jocko. I mean. What can you say about Jocko? I can say everything about Jocko. Jocko changed so many things. No, Jocko, you know, this is it's my favorite. I have a Jocko tattoo, but I have to take my pants off. That's all I was wondering. Yeah, it's like, it's it's really, uh, I don't mind taking my pants off for Jocko, but uh, maybe uh, I'll save that for my OnlyFans. More new releases. Ah, aha. Some and new, old releases. Yeah, yeah, new release. Goodness gracious, man, this is... This is great. You guys have a great story here, seriously. And as I get close to you, Thundercat story, this shirt, this jacket, it's amazing. I just suddenly noticed it. Yeah, baby. You know what I'm saying? Space jazz, baby. Could you explain like what you are wearing? Like uh, wearing? could somebody buy this? Uh no. Uh uh this is uh this is Balenciaga. You know what I'm saying? This is definitely like another level. And uh, you know, it, for those who know, you know, you know what I'm saying? And this is also a North Sea Jazz Festival hat. And you can't just get that at a thrift store. Maybe you could get it at a thrift store, but you have to go to the North Sea Jazz Festival to get a North Sea Jazz Festival hat. You were so awesome, Thundercat, with music and also addressing the camera. I love the way that you look in the camera. Saying, yeah, saying, yeah, yeah, I've done plenty of infomercials for barbecue uh, companies and, uh, you know, a couple of tire commercials. No, I don't know. I just have a natural tendency to look at the thing in the room that is demanding you look at it it's just like i won't sit in the restaurant without my back face in the door either so there's <laughs> there's that part too trauma at neptune records still some old records some older records yeah, yeah ringo star star have you run into him at all i have not gotten i have not had the chance to run into ringo star yet my dad would be proud of me if I got the chance. Have you met any Beatles that are alive? No. And, uh, like not inadvertently? No, and Paul plays bass. And I have not met Paul McCartney. Yeah. That's not fair. I don't think... Have you met anybody that's met Paul McCartney that plays bass? No. <laughs> no. Like maybe, maybe Flea, I'm sure Flea has... Flea has, Flea has had met to, everybody, everybody, but no, I have not met Paul McCartney. And here we continue on as I well. I need to cry right now. That's sorry about that. I just thought about that. I have not met Paul McCartney. My dad loves the Beatles too, and it's just like. And Paul McCartney's bass, like the Hofner with the set list on the back from the Star Club in '62. He would hate my bass. <laughs> Paul would hate my bass. I think he'd hate my bass. He'd be like, "It's no, it's not a bass. That that." That's not a. That's not a. It's not a base. What do people think of Hofners, though? I think people like Hofners because they look like violins, and people associate violins with pinky up. So it's a little bit more. I don't know. People think that it's a. It's a proper bass. I don't. I don't know. It looks like a violin, but uh, if you don't know how to play it, it doesn't sound any better. So uh, there's that part, but. Nah, yeah, that, maybe that's why people like him. It's also because it's a very signatory sound in a specific era in light of music that was very, very intense and popular. That could also be it. And here we are again at Neptune Records. Thank you for gracing Neptune's presence. This coming here out of the blue. Out of the blue, Thundercat. Yeah. So as we move down here, some more older records. This is kind of like the older section at Neptune Records. Ooh, Los Lobos is right next to Kenny Loggins. That's crazy. Los Lobos is right next to Kenny Loggins. Oh, you're planning on doing some emotional damage here. There you go. Celebrate me home. He's like, love me. Kenny Loggins just always wanted you to love him. I love you, Kenny. I do. And turn around some more records, Ooh. Thundercat. Emerson, Palmer, and Lake. <laughs> Turn you right around at that section. Goodness. Talk about awesome. Seriously. And the electric prunes oh as well. Legendary psychedelic. You guys keep you guys keep it all together here. I see how you like to roll. You got some serious stuff going on here. We move around here. My dad used to play with Randy Crawford. 
No way. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. No, seriously, my dad used to play. Is his, is his name on a record? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it was. Uh, I don't. I don't know if he's on here. I don't know if he's on the record as far as it's maybe live. I can't. It's too many words on here. What's going on? Ah, Paul Jackson. Paul M. Jackson. I, I know Paul Jackson. Abraham Laboriel on bass. Wow. Yeah. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. What did he tell you about that era? What was that like? What was, what was that experience like? Was this like? I don't know. I was like a baby, I think. What year is this? This has got to be 80-something. What is this? Where is the... 82. This is before I was born. So, yeah. No, this is Jeff Picaro on drums. Yeah, but Abraham Laborio. That's, that's insanity. But, yeah, no, anytime I talk to my dad about moments like that, he's just always kind of like... You know, I think he's still friends with some of the people that he would work with back then, too. But it's always like he's got these just like he's got these war stories. I always call them war, war. The road stories are like war stories, you know, or like, you know, live shows. It's just just what it is. It's like, you know, so I don't know. I just, uh, you know, I just we, we talk about different stuff, but I've never really specifically asked him about the Rennie Crawford years. I think I was still a, I was just a baby, though. Yeah, I was a little baby. That's the great thing about record stores. You explore and learn new stuff all the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. And Hall of Notes. <laughs> I love Hall of Notes. I love them so much. And we continue on here along some more <laughs> haunting you, Paul haunting you. More Beatles. Dom. What do you think about DVDs and that's their format? I love DVDs. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You know, the, everybody always thinks that there's some new thing that's going to come along and make everything obsolete. You know, like, guys, MP3 and streaming, it's going to take over. It does not. It, it just, they all exist together. Because the truth is, some of these DVDs and some of this stuff, they don't have the rights to create this stuff in the streaming world sometimes. And they don't, they don't pick up on it. Or, or they get the new edited version because they needed something to be able for, to have people to pay for. So there's a part of it where it's important to collect these DVDs still because there's some things that you will not find on streaming. And not only that, if you want the real and edited version, you're really going to have to get VHS or DVD. So... Oop. DVDs for you to explore oh, at Neptune Records. The Midnight Special. Oh my gosh, Jeff Beck. Are you kidding me? The Matrix. <laughs> Space, baby. Also, Thundercat, yeah. the 45 section. Ooh. Look, some suicidal <laughs> punk. Or would suicidal <laughs> ever be in the punk section? Oh, yeah. Uh, suicidal would suicidal be in the punk section they, damn right they'd be in the punk section they'd be in the thrash section they'd be in the metal section like suicidal is like the beginnings of it you know what i mean there's a part where if you know you know you know what i'm saying it's it's cool to walk around with a t-shirt and i always had friends that when i get off tour they just take all my merch i was like i would wonder where my hats would go or like my sweater and it's like I wouldn't see it for another couple years, and I'll see my friend wearing it. And I'm like, I don't remember giving you that, you know. And it's just, but yeah, no, it's like you know. And speaking of Mike Mir, he actually came out to the show in L.A. when I was with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and it was like, you know, it's like, what was that like? That was cool. Yeah, I was like, that's part of my upbringing, you know what I mean? And it's just like. Have Mike Muir in the audience with his fam, you know what I mean? It's kind of he's tripping out. A reunion, possibly on stage. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> get up there and. You know, start playing possessed to skate. No, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's like, I mean, that's, yeah, man. Uh, you know, I'm born and raised. Suicidal tendencies, baby. Thank you again. Like, is this rare, like, on tour, coming to a record store late night? Oh, sorry. And I'm like, trip the Bob's Burger musical album. Oh, Chicago. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. No, I mean, I love Chicago. I do. If you know, you know. You know what I mean? One of the last bands ever on 8-track cassette, 8-track cartridge. One of the last bands ever, Chicago. I wonder how, <laughs> I wonder how, I wonder how that hit them. Yeah, like, it's like, we're the last band ever. We're guys, we're one of the last to do it. It's just like, ah. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, no, it's just, like, what, what came after 8 What was this, what came next? I guess... Probably CD, like CD. CD. There's like a moment for many, many. Oh, I guess it would be after eight track. It was cassette. It was cassette. Then it was, was then it? LP or whatever, and then Giant back. Laser bagel, right? And then the laser disc. Yeah, yeah, the laser disc is just the size of a symbol, like a crash symbol. 
But thank you so much again, Thundercat, for coming after your... Do you have a lot of time after a gig? Like, Prince would wind down and do gigs after playing bass. Oh. What do you think about Prince's bass playing? I thought Prince was fantastic. If you, uh, to be honest with you, I, you know, I, I do not deny his amazingness. I got the chance to hang out with him a couple of times, and my older brother used to play with him. That was a crazy thing. And there was, and it, there was at one point, a girl that I was dating that also worked with him too. But that's like, I feel like that's a normal. That's not you can't. That's not a duh. But uh, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, no, nah, I, I got a chance to to meet him a couple of times and go to the uh, the house and have a jam session with him and. Uh, what was that like? I, I mean, no, it was. Were you afraid? Nah. To make a mistake if Prince thought it was a mistake, or did Prince ever find any mistakes? Oh, I think he just immediately recognized a, a walking mistake. But I also drank a whole bottle of Grey Goose at the time, and I remember I, I, I remember ending up. You know that whole. You know the thing about him serving pancakes is like it's he really yes he really was like that. But I remember playing, and I remember my older brother was playing, and I remember. Was it a family jam? I mean, it's it's kind of a technical, it's kind of a technical, yeah, I mean, you know, if like, if you got me and my brother playing, of course, it's just, but, like, it was just one of those things, he used to have jam sessions all the time, and I remember at the time I was hanging out with Jay Davey, the group, and they brought us there with them, you know, and it was just like, yeah, and we went to go play, and we got on the instruments, and he didn't tell, he didn't, he didn't tell us to get off for a second, which I guess was, that was a good sign. But he definitely kicked us off at one point, and you know, I think I walked around the house and looked at the motorcycle, and then immediately went upstairs and, and drank a bottle of Grey Goose and ate some pancakes. What key was the jam in, and what were you jamming on? I don't remember, but I, I always feel like any time me and my brother would sit down to play, it'd be overwhelming. <laughs> you wouldn't know which way we were going, but we always knew where we were going. So I don't know. I think he, at first he was like, all right. And then he was like, get off. We're going to play some real songs now. <laughs> but no, you know, I remember it. I remember it. And I remember my brother playing with him. And my brother has a ton of stories too. It would just be comedy. He would come off the road and tell me some cool stuff, you know. And every time I would see him, we always had this knowledge of each other. You know, like, man, he, he would see me and be like, Stephen. And I'd be like, Mr. Prince. But I would just, you know, wouldn't want to play him close, wouldn't want to get too close, wouldn't want to get too crazy. But yeah, no, it, yeah, no, Prince was fantastic. Bass playing was fantastic. Amazing. Well, I think it's great. Like, Prince would jam after his gigs, oh, wouldn't yeah. he? Yeah, no. Yeah. For hours, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's all, you know, it's almost like if you weren't careful, you could call it imprisonment. But, um, yeah, no, he would keep playing. He would just never stop playing. And that's, that's pretty fantastic. You know, that's, that's cool, man, you know. After the party is the after party, and after the party is the after party, and then after the party is the after party, and the pancakes and still the party. You played controversy for two hours straight. I like that idea. I love the idea that you did not jam tonight, but you came to a record store yeah. to meet me. That is incredible. Thank you, Thundercat. I, you know. Thank you for having me here. You know, <laughs> this is this is cool. This is cool. Oh, more records and Neptune Records, as we can see here, and also so actually some posters and buttons Ooh, as well. Buttons? Oh, y'all got buttons. I love buttons. Ooh, some good ones. You got a West Craven. Yeah, you got Superman and Beastmaster. You guys got some cool pins. I, I love myself a good pin. Ooh, Lawnmower Man. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that lawnmower man is fantastic the abyss space jam oh those movie pins see now that that is a that is a genuine collectible if you know these movie pins are literally like promotion i don't even think they, they don't even do those anymore now that i'm thinking about it i'm seeing a couple things here like the relic pin that's crazy that lawnmower man pin though speaking Got some life there. Yeah, life. You can have it. I can have the. I will buy that for you, Thundercat. You can have that. Do you like that one? I like the lawnmower man. I mean, I also like the I got laid on ladies' night pin. Well, but take the... that as well. Take that as well. Ooh. Ooh. That would look great on the. On the on the on the, on the Balenciaga. Oh, this this guys, would this look good on the Balenciaga? That. It kind of fits, right? It looks like I got hit by a car anyway. Like this would be right. Where do you? 
right here, right here. Sp space, lawnmower space. Girls' night in space. And the chain. What can it say about the chain? Ooh. Uh, shout out to the guys at uh, If and Co. Been to do the chain. Yeah, baby. You know what I'm saying? Um, no, yeah, no. This is this is supersonic. This is. You guys know who Supersonic is? Do you know who Supersonic is? You're Thundercat. We have to know. <laughs> okay, Supersonic. Okay, so this is how Supersonic works. So like, I, I think like you, I don't, I don't think you can get him in the first iteration of Sonic the Hedgehog one on Sonic one. You got him in Sonic two. I wonder if, but see here's the thing. I wonder if they had him in Japan already, but we didn't have him because I didn't even know you could do a spin attack in Sonic one. And that they just removed that from our video game because they just wanted us to struggle. But Sonic 2, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, once you got all six of the Chaos Emeralds, which is the special stage, which you had to have 100 points for either way it goes at the end of the level, you would, you, you, you'd, you'd go through... Actually, you had the 50, was it the 50 rings and the little goal post part. Yeah, and then you get to the, get to the special stage, which had the dopest song ever, the... The song that sounded like Larry Graham and Graham Central Station. No, seriously. And then you'd have to get all seven. Of, is it seven or six? Seven. Seven Chaos Emeralds. And if you got all seven Chaos Emeralds and you got it in a timely manner before the game was over, you turn into Super Sonic, which is basically like Sonic on like a speedball or something. And he just wouldn't die. If he fell on spikes, if he ran into anything, he'd just run through it. It was like Cocaine Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't know. Or it was just like he was just like crazy he's just like uh, it's just manic sonic like the hedgehog and his hair is glowing yellow it's kind of like the early iterations of super saiyan before we even got dragon ball i think because dragon ball already existed but dragon ball z came around in the late 80s and 90s but we got sonic the hedgehog in 92 so i think i saw yeah we saw sonic the hedgehog first before we saw dragon ball z and the super saiyan transformation so sonic the hedgehog 2 is where you saw sonic go super saiyan Bam. So much knowledge from Thundercat. Any other buttons or posters at all? Ooh, I see blood. What is that? Oh, that's Guns N' Roses. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is great. David Bowie. David Bowie. Ooh, you guys got some stuff, man. Nice. <laughs> Slayer. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> what about that lineup? That had somebody went home missing an appendix of... All of their teeth, a couple fingers, Testament. I love Testament. I Did love you it. play on a bill like this with Suicidal? I used to play on bills like this all the time. Yeah, Testament, a favorite. Slayer, a favorite. I remember the day I got to see Slayer. I remember the day that there was a... We had a... I feel like you would love this. One of Rage Against the Machine's last shows before they like had stopped touring for a while was in South America, and the, the bill was literally... Suicidal Tendencies, Mars Volta, and Rage Against the Machine. And that was it. It was at a stadium. And I think I had never seen them before. I'd always listened to them in high school. And I'll never forget seeing Rage Against the Machine in that manner. That was overwhelming. It felt like the apocalypse. Like we think, I, you know, like Travis Scott has definitely in, in the running for Metalocalypse level. But Rage Against the Machine in, the, in that time, I had never seen anything like it. Never seen anything like it. Like, I think there was a riot for like a whole day after they played. And I, we couldn't leave the venue. <laughs> we could not leave the venue. And I just remember sitting up there in tear gas, a little bit in tears. <laughs> but we couldn't leave because they were outside destroying the city. Rage Against the Machine is awesome. But eventually, what happened? I don't remember how we left. I think we got escorted out by the police. <laughs> fingerprinted i don't know but uh that was one of the most epic shows i've ever seen in my life rage against the machine and mars volta yeah it was in south america yeah 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 I, I, the greatest moment i think the greatest moment ever on stage i've ever seen was they were going they were going through the albums i'm gonna i gotta paint the whole picture for you they're going through the album they're going through the battle for los angeles but then they go to evil empire second instead of that being first and so they you know they get through people of the sun and and I'm like I'm standing on the stage. So first of all, the part where I'm standing on the stage is already like I'm drooling and kind of peeing a little. And they take this, they they run off stage. You know, like right after People of the Sun, they just run off stage. Tom Morello comes running by. I'm like this, and, and I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? You know, and he's like, uh, they were legal. They literally he turns to me and he goes, we're not legally allowed to go into Bulls on Parade for an hour. And I was like, 
And he said, and he points at the crowd. He goes, look at the crowd. And when I look at the crowd, I wasn't paying attention because I was like overwhelmed by the sound. I look at the crowd. They're like ripping the seats out of the stadium floor, out of the concrete. They're going, they're like shaking it and they're creating a bonfire in the middle of the floor of the, of the field. And I'm like, oh my God. And I remember like sitting there and I, I think I have it in one of my phones. And I turned to my friend who's playing with me at the time. I was like, Tim, I don't think I've ever seen anything this intense in my entire life. And then they run back out. And out of dead silence, they start bulls on parade. And when I tell you, it felt like the apocalypse. Like the whole entire field was just... Burr, 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 burr. I was like, oh my God, it's on fire. The whole field's on fire. There's like the sheriff's department lined all around the, the stadium. And I remember just sitting there like, oh my God. I was like, I felt so small. In that moment, I felt so small. And I think that forever changed my life. Like, for real. Like... Yeah, Rage Against the Machine is on another level. Yeah, that's... I want to see them when I'm like 70. <laughs> the next time, I want to see old Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> it's going to hit a lot different than the Beatles, I promise that. At Neptune Records, more posters, more buttons. As we go around the corner here, you can see some more soundtracks. Oh, oh yeah! Are you kidding me? Sir, a gym. Oh, what a gym. Wow. Oh, this is good. Oh, the complete. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? What is going on right now? Yo. Why would you like this, Thundercat? This is one of the best cart. First of all, this is one of the best cartoons ever created, hands down, hands down. And some of the best music because I know my guy from Devo worked on it, right? And and I love Pendleton Ward and and the and the people that created this, Rebecca Sugar and everybody. I really love their animation style and work. And this this is one of the most original cartoons ever created. And the music for it it just goes with it too. Like I still like me and my daughter sing some of the songs from this. This is great. This is a this is a that's special. You guys really have that in here. Smoking. Some more records here. Nice. Yeah, man. <laughs> and then, who do we have here? Ooh, who's this sexy young lad? Hi. Could you explain what is going on here? I just uh, feel like I'd seen too much at this point. Guys, I, <laughs> Pikachu is holding it all together. And hey, look at me now. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. How rare is this item, Thundercat? Uh, it's quite rare. I, I'm wondering if you got this off the dark web. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this uh, is Pikachu, my, my game of death. What is Thundercat wearing? I'm wearing a custom uh, game of death outfit, also known as the reality of death fit, created by Danny Prasad. You know, my good friend Danny Prasad is an amazing designer. I got my little uh, Pikachu bag. You know, I got my little Pikachu bag, and I got my little uh, Vans on down there. You know, I put the, I can compo- I put this bag together. I did. You know, it took a lot because everything here is from definitely definitely from Japan. But <laughs> it took a long time to put this together, and I got my little earmuffs on because I'm tired. I don't want to hear anything. I was told this picture was quite sexy. How many copies of this cutout do you have? I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know how you get this. It, does it come with a certain amount of uh, CDs and and Thundercat right to your right? What do you see? Let's see Jack looking like he's seen too much too. Another cutout. Yes, I see another cutout. They look like they've seen a lot too. With a space for the records. Notice there's no space for the records on your cutout. See, so that so then that means you guys did get this off the dark web. Baboons. <laughs> because. Uh, I don't know how you got this. Uh, and this record would go quite well with the Skeddo, right? 25 year anniversary Pokemon soundtrack. 25 years of Pokemon with Katy Perry, J Balvin, Vince Staples, and this is great. I no Thundercat. That. You know, yeah, that's. That's weird, isn't it? It is, it is a little weird. Or maybe Volume 2. Volume 2. I would like to contribute the next, 20, or, the, <laughs> the next 25, 50, 50 years Pokemon. 50 year Pokemon. You'd be into that though. You'd be into that. Oh yeah. I like. Are you kidding me? Squirtle was my first. Thanks again, 
Thundercat for coming to Neptune Records to discover all the treasures here and to visit yourself. Guys. Yeah. yeah hold on, let me see if I can still make this face. Hold on, let me just make sure my lips aren't dry. That's damn good. That is it. Tired. It's amazing to think you played a show tonight. You know? You know, yeah, no, that, that was... Oh, yeah, I played a show, huh? Yeah, you did. I did play a show. You forgot. Do you forget you play shows? Yeah, I'm like a goldfish. It takes me a lot to remember what happened, like, yesterday, because you're not there anymore, so I figure it didn't exist anymore, because, what do you, you know, we're not there anymore, so it's... That's it. Lots of bargain records as well, Thundercat. Bargain records. Bargain records. <laughs> Were these the ones that... What do, how, how do you have a bargain doobie? No return. <laughs> no, no returns. Or this, what is this, like uh, Elvis's like Mormon album? What is this? This <laughs> is just going on here. Wings at the speed of sound. You can't return these? Why can't you return? Because they're bargain. Because <laughs> they're bargain. They're like, get, get, get these out of here. More back to the cassettes. Ooh, this is crazy because the things you could do to tape nowadays. Oh, Joe Sets Randy with the Silver Surfer. Guys, I got a chance to see this guitar actually too, up close and personal. Where? At the Ibanez factory. Where they, At the factory? Yeah, when he when he. Were, you got to go to a factory? Yeah, the Ibanez. We got. Was that hard? How did you? Well, that, no, the, that's that's the factory that's that's in LA, and you know, like you know, Ibanez, like, woo, shout out to Ibanez. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, no, it's the guys at the Ibanez Custom Shop are amazing. Yeah, that's that's who made his guitar. Surfing with the aliens. Surfing. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. You guys are freaking amazing, man. I literally could sit in here. I mean, you that's is that what people do? You just come in here and sit here and just. Just literally just listen to music all day. Do you guys serve orange juice? Across the street. It's across the street. You got to get the But there are juice. pins as well. There are some more pins there. <laughs> oh, that looks like a Skinamax movie. Oh, that's a... <laughs> nice. Oh, you got a lot of great expectation pins. <laughs> Bushwhacks. <laughs> Maverick. Oh, you got the Meteor Man pin. Bruh. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> Meteor Man. You can, I'll buy that for you. Oh my God. The Meteor Man. This is going to go good on the Balenciaga jacket, man. Meteor Man on the Balenciaga space jacket. Crazy. That's crazy. Woo! Robert Townsend. It's sort of dangerous, too, because you might get pricked, but yeah. there's. Oh. See, oh, you got yeah, yourself. Yeah. Tetanus shot. All right. Are you into Star Trek at all? Are you kidding me? I love it. Generations, baby. There are some special Star Trek buttons, aren't there, at Neptune? Yeah, behind the counter. Do you want to pick those out? Yeah, that'd be great. Are you kidding me? As we leave Neptune Records, we want to leave you with some special gifts. Oh, my God. Thundercat. And behind the counter... Uh -huh. What What do you think about those pins? Uh -huh. Yeah, the OG, man. You can take them out if you want. I mean, Captain Kirk immediately is... It's just, this is, this is great. <laughs> this is great. You guys just, this is great. <laughs> There's so many Captain Kirks. Ooh, nice, Mr. Sulu. Nice. Yeah, no, this, this is beautiful, man. You guys are really special. Oh, my gosh, Spock. Ooh, this is crazy. This is, this is all going to look fantastic on the Balenciaga jacket, guys. This is crazy. This is crazy. What is this, Wrath of Khan? I feel like I remember that field suit. That's the Wrath of Khan, or is that part one or two? It's like, that's, that's part... Is that the one where Scotty dies? That's the one where Scotty dies, right? Wrath of Khan 2. I remember the one where they saw punk rockers. Remember on the bus, they yeah. saw some punk rockers. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, no, this is... this is. I think, I think it's important to have good old uh, Shatner keep him close. But would you like that on the jacket? Is there any other ones you like on the jacket? I mean, I saw the Spock, and I was like, come on. Are you kidding me? Yeah, please. Dude, Another Nard gift for you. Are you kidding me? No problem. Where did Spock go? Again, out of the blue, you Thundercat, why did you come here? Are you Out of the blue, like out of the blue. I was told you guys had falafel, and, <laughs> and I was starting to realize there was no falafel. 
Well, thanks for your time, Thundercat, and coming to Neptune Records. I really... I, I think Autry's still in records back there. <laughs> and thank Autry for arranging all this. <laughs> Autry, uh, maybe you could come down there for a second. What can you say about Autry? Autry's fantastic. He's a good, good, awesome bassist. And also, I enjoy him working with me because he really cares about myself. And I appreciate that because sometimes I feel like people don't care. That's a real thing. And Autry, what can you say about Thundercat? I mean, he's a fantastic bassist, as most people know. He's an incredibly genuine, sweet guy. He's really funny, stylish, friendly. I mean, literally like a man falling from space. But never, but never touching the ground, just keeping throughout the universe, soaring, spinning. This is, this is proof that bass players run the world. What's amazing is that you, Autry, saw me out of the blue and then got Thundercat and brought Thundercat out of the blue to Neptune. Fortunately, we were already together, so it all worked out. Like this by chance, I walked on the street yes. and Autry was there. And here we are on Neptune. In Getting a, some Neptune buttons. In some space buttons. In the Balenciaga NASA jacket. I'm very proud of this jacket. It's, nice. it's very nice. It's very nice. Well, thank you very much, Thundercat and Autry, for coming after your show, after your show, to Neptune Records in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Anything else you want to add to the people out there at all? I love y'all. You know, I love y'all so much. I love the people. I don't trust y'all, but I love you though. I'm work. I'm working on trust. I got trust issues, but I love you though. I don't know what's going on, but I can't tell. I can't tell what's going on a lot of the time. But I care. I think. I think I care because I. Yeah, I. I care. I do. I'm. You know. Either you care or you don't. I care. I love you. Well, thanks very much, Thundercat. Keep on washing your hands in the free world and do, 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 do. <laughs> He washes his hands. <laughs>